Hello everybody and welcome to the first video of the OTI video review show. My name is Nadim Nasser and I am a master instructor here at OTI where real improvement happens. Now the OTI review show is a new set of videos that we will come out with every now and then to show our online community what it is like to work with OTI. Everybody here who purchases an online course from us or comes and works with us on court on, uh, during clinics or private sessions always receives a personalized video analysis or a personalized video review. Now we will post videos based on your guys' submissions every now and then here on social media so that you get a glimpse into what it's like and one, of, one lucky winner will receive a free video review after we have uh, raffled it off. So let's, without further ado, go into the first clip where our first participant, Jake, here from California, is going to uh, see exactly what it's all about when he receives a personalized video review. Please stay tuned until the end of this video where I'll show you exactly or tell you exactly how to submit your footage if you're interested in being the lucky winner down the road. Hey guys, I'm Jake. I'm from California, 32 years old, a 4 to 4 5 player. I played in high school but never competitively beyond that level. Uh, I have a heavy topspin forehand, lefty, and it's my biggest weapon, but it's also the source of a lot of unwanted errors, long balls, short balls, uh, you know, net cords, you name it. So I'm looking forward to learning from Nadim over time how to make that weapon even stronger and much more consistent. We'll begin with a short clip of Jake hitting with his partner here in real speed. And um, as you can see here, Jake's forehand overall looks quite good at real speed and he's able to generate a good amount of power as he accurately pointed out. And the problem is mainly with consistency. So when he's on, he's on. When he's off, he's off. And um, we're looking at being able to not worry about where the ball is on the court in order to hit a powerful forehand. We want to be able to be consistently in a position to do that regardless of what the ball does when it comes over the net to us. So that is what we're going to look for. So as you can see, he can hit a good forehand, no question about it. And it's probably a decent enough shot for a 4-0 and even 4-5 level at times, depending on who you face. But if you want to go to that next level, we need to work on a couple things here. So let's get going. All right. So let's take a look at Jake's forehand here and um, go into detail about why he has the power that he's describing that he has but lacks consistency. So the first couple things, I always like to start off with the positives. Um, the fact that you have an inside out swing is great. So you're starting in an inside position close to the body, which is step number one. You want to come from a position close to the body and then swing inside out toward contact. So that is a great job. You're doing a great job there. You have a good forehand grip. If I was to analyze the grip from this perspective right here, I would say that you are just about between a Eastern and semi-Western grip, which is very good. And also you have a nice loop. So <clears throat> you have a, a good smooth take back right here in terms of going up first. So these things are good. And um, I think that they will do you a great favor as we continue with your forehand improvement now. The thing that is causing you trouble is relatively clear to see. So I'm going to show you three forehands. Here's number one. Um, and take a look at the individual arm movement or the large take back that we see um, significantly behind the body. So if I was to draw a line right here, um, most of the action is starting on the wrong side of the body. Okay. So this is the first forehand. Let's take a look at the other two. After you hit this forehand here, let's take a look what happens on the next one. Um, the ball comes really deep and then again the forehand take back is really really large Okay, going way behind the back both racket and arm are way behind your back So it's very difficult to generate consistently a ball that can keep the other side at bay or or, at le or even get into the offensive position and let's look at the third one again a relatively large take back even if you have plenty of time the difference being when the large take back is the case or when you have plenty of time you can still come up with a relatively decent shot like you do here um, simply because of the time that you have um, but basically what we're looking into improving is the size take back needs to be more compact so we want to stay here on the left side of the body uh, without the arm or the racket crossing over to the right side here and then we want to engage the kinetic chain a little bit more here you can engage it quite nicely your body comes around you're coming from the bottom up, 
But if I look at the ones in the pa in, in, in uh, previous shots right here, especially when you get caught back, it's very difficult to engage your body properly, and it's a lot of upper body movement, especially your arm that has to do all the work, and therefore you can't consistently generate the power that you want um, when under pressure. So let's work on these two things. Um, smaller or more compact take back and a better involvement of the lower body synchronizing the kinetic chain. All right, very good job, Jake. Now we know exactly what we're dealing with, okay? A very good analysis by Jake on his own stroke. So good power creation, good spin creation, um, but lack of consistency and lack of fluidity really in his game. Um, very big forehand, especially when you have time. But when, when there's little time, then you struggle. So what we want to focus on here is we want to take away that large take back. You want to make it a little bit more compact. And also we want to improve your balance and your consistency by involving your entire kinetic chain a little bit more and I would like to begin by demonstrating this here with an exercise that I like very much myself um, and that is that of a compact unit turn so what we want to avoid is we want to avoid the hitting arm going past your back to the point where you cannot see it in other words you can't really see my arm on this side of the body you can maybe see it over there but you definitely see the racket over there okay and if the ball comes with a lot of pace and or depth it's very very difficult to meet the ball ball and generate any effortless power and consistency get a good drive on the ball if your racket is still so far back and your arm is behind your back so what I like doing is I like to use the fence as a, a tool here and position myself either in front of it like I'm doing now in a minute I'll show you another one um, where the fence is my sort of natural border okay it's an obstacle I cannot pass so what I have to do I have to be close enough so that when I do my unit turn if I go too far I'm hitting the fence okay and I do not want to be doing this so I'm gonna exaggerate at first with shadow swings okay do my split step my unit turn get down and then come back up and I'm not a lefty but I'm trying to go apples to apples here unit turn down and up so that the racket and the arm, the hitting arm, don't really go too far back. Now this is something that's going to take a little bit of time, especially if you have your arm all the way back normally, okay? And you need to do this. The first step is always to do this without a ball. Shadow swing is key here to get an idea, to get your body to and your brain to respond. So split step, unit turn, down and up in a way where the racket does not pass over behind your back, okay? And the arm neither, right here. Okay, if I go too far back, I'm going to hit the fence and that tells me that I have activated my arm and I have too much independent arm movement. Let me show you this from the side view as well. So instead of having the, the fence behind you, you'll have it to the side. Okay guys, so let's take a look at this here from the side view, which means the fence is now to the right of me as a lefty and it would be to the left of me if I was a righty and you're struggling with independent arm movement like we saw Jake do. So now what we want to focus on is we kept the racket to the left side of the body with the fence being behind us. Now some players, they go back to where the racket actually touches the fence here. So you may want to actually start with this because the distance between your racket and the fence is greater if you're hitting this fence then the back exercise may be something that is a little bit too advanced at first even because in a minute you're gonna want to hit some balls so what I want you to do here is the same thing face the front fence to the right if you're lefty split step unit turn down and up it's the exact same thing because what I want to avoid is I want to avoid this and it, it does seem a little bit extreme with the distance some players cover, but this is very much the case. So Jake, take a look at this because you're in some instances quite far back to make up for what your body didn't help you do to begin with. And that's where the next step comes in, involving the entire kinetic chain. So number one, I want you to go ahead and utilize the fence so that you make, uh, minimize and make your contact a lot more, sorry, your, your, your take back a lot more compact and now the next exercise will be to involve your entire kinetic chain and let's do this on court here with a couple of balls okay so now that we've worked on making the take back a little bit shorter and um, not having so much independent arm movement as part of the everyday forehand that you hit we now want to incorporate the entire kinetic chain and allow the synchronization of lower and upper body to flow a little bit more so the exercise that I like doing here is called the hold your finish position which basically means the finish position should give you immediate feedback of whether you've 
purposely and correctly incorporated the entire kinetic chain. So after you do your split step unit turn, first of call, of course with shadow swing, split step unit turn down and up, you want to notice that you have a balanced finish and that you really engaged the legs to drive from low to high. Okay. If you can't do either, if you find that you're not really incorporating the legs and the arms are pretty much a consequence of the legs pushing from the bottom up, then you know the effort is still too high on the upper body and not enough on the lower body. Okay. So you want to make sure that you can get that naturally feeling like, okay, there's not much effort involved, although the ball gets a lot of, a lot of um, pop on it, so to speak. Okay. So good clearance and good depth. So let me demonstrate real quick with a couple of balls here. I'm not a lefty, but I'm going to give it, give it my best shot. I want to do a split step unit turn, self feed the ball down and up. And I really want to aim for good clearance and want to hold my finish to get immediate feedback from my stroke. Split step unit turn out in front, down and up. And I want to exaggerate. These are very nice and deep. If they go a little bit too deep, that's fine. Then my body weight just needs to stay with that finish a little bit longer. Okay. And I want to do this one more time. Split step unit turn down and up. And I'm really exaggerating, not getting that racket and that hitting arm past my back. So that is a very good exercise to do. Now you, of course, after you do it with shadow swings and cell feeds and have somebody ba basket feed or use the wall with two bounces and hit it back, really just focusing on these two things, keeping the take pack compact and utilizing the entire kinetic chain and holding that finish for balance purposes a little bit better so that you can consistently get into these positions when you increase the difficulty. So I hope that this helps and let's take it to the next level together. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it is very important. I cannot stress it enough that you record yourself when you go through these exercises. Just doing them because you now have seen what's supposed to happen doesn't mean you actually do it because the muscle memory, brain memory may still take over. Okay. So very important that you record yourself. Utilize the angles I used. The straight from behind view, um, straight from the side view is another view that is very popular or even diagonally from the front. Um, anything that can help us um, identify your progress as you go forward and also for you new players who want to send in footage. Having said that, um, we will encourage you guys over the next weeks and months to submit footage to us if you're interested in having a chance to be featured in one of our OTI video review show segments. In order to do so, you need to please email james at onlinetennisinstruction.com with your interest and he will give you the details on how to record and submit your footage to us to have a chance to be featured. Okay, so um, after that, if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, share it and comment underneath so that we can stay in touch with you. Uh, my name is Nadim Nasser, and I was very excited to work with you and I hope that we get to do this many more times in the future. All the best and good luck with your tennis. Until next time.